What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be talking about a continuation of our existing series of artifacts. We're going to be talking about this time, Augustus Magic Ball AMB. So this is one of the really good defensive artifacts in the game. It's not really useful on every hero though, just because of the way the artifact works out. And the basic version of it is not anything great, but the o Ormus upgraded version is absolutely amazing. So let's go over the artifact and then we're going to go over what heroes this artifact is great for. <laughs> So let's jump in here, take a look at artifacts, and go over the regular version first of Augustus Magic Ball. So this is a very offensive artifact, even in its just normal six-star form. 25% attack is really good. The speed is what it's really used for. That 70 speed is really great. The block also really good, but usually on the regular version, the block isn't as important. But when it becomes upgraded, it becomes very important. Although this block does have synergy on a couple of heroes, mainly from the Shadow Faction. So we'll definitely go over that. But it is mainly used in its regular form for its speed for certain types of heroes that want to just make sure they go first in combat or at least very close to first in combat. Now this artifact really, really, really gets good even in its glittery form. But at its splendid form, it does amazing things. So you get this active ability or called Enchanted Shield. This will reduce the damage received by 250% of the hero's attack. Invalid, so it will not mess with healing charm and monsters. Those damage will still come through full, full blast. The one thing to note here, though, is that this attack is not modified in combat. When it was first released, essentially, this 250% kept fluctuating based on what the current attack was of a hero. And when it came out, there was one hero that was completely overpowered and busted with this artifact. And surprisingly enough, it was Cthuga. Yes, Cthuga. Because every time he takes damage from a target inflicted with a burn, he would gain 10% more attack for three rounds. Well, if he gets if he's getting hit by like every single target, he's getting an extra 60% for every round, and it could go up to 120% pretty much because it lasts for three rounds. That was just absolutely crazy because then his healing became insane. So they did have to nerf it. That was its original form. And yes, Cthulhu was like the most meta hero possible when it came out. He was able to do some really crazy things in Sealand and a ton of different places. So they did change this so that the attack value is whatever your beginning of combat stats are. Now, this can it add in all the fixed stats from Star Spawn, everything like that. Those do get added in before this calculation. But once your combat starts, this 250% is a locked in statistic. So, again, it's still really great for the speed. The block actually comes in really handy on certain heroes. But the main thing is the 25% attack. And normally, if you are running this on a hero, you're either going to be want to run a speed attack stone an attack attack stone, an attack attack holy damage stone, something along those lines that's boosting your attack even higher because even your stone and your gears plus attack percentages will get added into this figure. So you guys have seen it. Some heroes are just absolutely god tier with this, but let's go over which heroes really do work with this artifact. Let's start with the Shadow Faction. We're going to go for to certain heroes here. Annabelle, not exactly one you want to do it. Annabelle is going to be more of a support. You want her very tanky. None of her abilities really rely on her attack all that much. She's not a damage dealer. Doesn't work out that well. Ankiri Maro could use it. Uh, he's not exactly the fastest hero straight out of the gates. I mean, heck, when a support hero is faster than you, that kind of means you are a slow hero. You're probably not going to want to run on, on Kirimaro, but 
who you want to run it on potentially is Eloise. Now, Eloise is better with a crown in things like Sea Land, but in most content, she is going to do much better with an A and B. One of the big reasons for that is because upon blocking attack, she will do her counter attack and deal damage to enemies. This is very, very strong because natively she has 60%. If you throw an A and B on her, you don't need to run a block stone most of the time because you're already at 110% block. Unless the enemies have very high precision to get past your block, you'll be in a fine spot with an A and B. Plus her attack values are very high. Going fast isn't really an important thing for her. It's nice because her active ability does do quite a bit of damage and she has that constant healing every time she counterattacks. So Eloise, very good pick. Uh, Tick's not a great one. You're going to want to run energy or Punisher staff on him, so we're going to pass on that. Ithaqua, you could, but again, typically Ithaqua, you're going to either run a crown or a more offensive artifact. Now, the only other one I want to talk about is Horus is a potential candidate even though he usually does better with something like a withered armor for the shadow faction. However, every three successful blocks he has, he does do that counterattack. It breaks him out of CC effects and he does deal damage to three enemies with restoring HP. Again, he is natively 60% block. So with an A and B that puts him over 100%, you don't need a block stone at that point. If you really don't want it, you could run something more like an HP HP or an attack HP, which sounds very nice in all honesty, because you do want your attack value to be very high with him still, because A and B is going to lower it, but to each their own. Splendid A and B is probably on par with like Withered Armor, so Splendid Artifact, just the regular Artifact, I think you're going to go with the regular Artifact in most cases. Over to the Fortress Faction. So the Fortress Faction doesn't have that many people who do very well with it. Saya, you could use it on, not great. Fiona's a decent candidate for it just because her shields are based on her attack and her allies attack. So the higher your attack value, the better. However, a crown is most likely going to be suited better for her. Again, Inosuke can do decent with it. It's not like his best artifact. It's not his worst artifact. It's that nice middle ground. The one hero I will say out of the Fortress Faction that can do very well with it is a Sherlock. Getting his attack value very high and then allowing him to actually swap HP with allies when he does drop below a certain amount is uh, is very nice. So when he drops below 30%, it will consume two layers of his well calculated exchanging health. So if he is very low HP, but very high attack, his swaps are going to do a decent amount of damage when he swaps to the enemy team. Plus, he's going to be very tanky. A lot of people run him with A and B nowadays instead of a splendid Rui. If you do, however, run two Sherlocks, it's usually one with a Rui Scepter, one with an A and B. But we haven't seen Sherlock in a while really be a meta hero ever since his doves are now able to be purified. That was a big, big change. Besides that, I wouldn't consider it really on any other hero. There's much better options for all of them. In the Abyss faction, so the Abyss faction is interesting in that some heroes can still do good. I mean, Cthulhu can still get you to Sea Land 20 with an AMB upgraded as well. Wall deck, I think I've seen it done with. Morax, uh, you usually want to use something more offensive with him. Delacium, again, more offensive. There's not really any great candidates in the Abyss faction. Into the Forest faction, so... If you're not running energy feed, Rogans can do very well with this because they have a very good attack value and they definitely want to go as soon as possible. They have very good speed natively. Giving them additional speed is just going to help you out even more. So Rogan is an excellent candidate for this. Besides him, I don't think I would run it on anybody else. Maybe Shaho. Because again, the speed's a little slow, but the attack value, the base attack value is very good. Not many people are going to have him, so we're not really going to talk about it that much. There's really no other great candidates in the Fortress faction. But moving over to the Dark faction is where we start seeing some better things. So Drake is a decent candidate for this artifact. He is very quick already, so it's going to make sure he goes very fast. It's going to let him get his active off sooner, get that black hole mark on the enemies, so that as your allies deal more damage, it's going to convert into more damage as mark damage at the end of round, which is great. The other one that is very good with the upgrade A and B is a carry. 
Carrie wants speed. She wants to go as fast as possible. And this A and B will synergize perfectly with a speed attack stone on her. Very solid. If you're not running the A and B variant of Carrie, most likely you're running an energy artifact on her. So to each your own, to each their own. But A and B is very, very solid on Carrie. And lastly, we come to the light faction. I mean, Tusi Lago can do okay with it. It's fast, but it's just not useful. The one hero in this faction that does very well with it is Russell. The speed helps him. He has very high attack when he's fully built out using a speed attack stone on him. He's going to be very quick, very tanky, as long as you're not talking about extreme end game PvP meta. And then, of course... Ada can actually do surprisingly well with it as well. Now, Transcendence Heroes. We have five of them now, and a lot of them do very well with this artifact, although I switch between Golden Crown and a and a ton. Vesa does amazing with a and I love her with a and Get her very quick. She's already really, really fast. Get her even faster to get those shields and healing out to her team is a very good strategy. Jara can do okay with it, but of course, Rui Scepter or Crown are typically the two you want to do with her. Asmodel, not a great pickup. He's better with a crown or if you're running a very burst offensive setup with a Punisher staff. Queen, however, can do very good with it. Having her get her active ability off very early on is nice. She's going to tank a ton of hits. Again, it's kind of a toss up between A and B and crown on her. They're very much kind of fluid artifacts between the two. Uh, she can do very well with it in Sealand as well. And then you have Sword Flash. Sword Flash does very well with it as well, having her go very quickly in combat. Essentially the fastest hero in the game. With an A and B is hard to outspeed her with a speed attack stone. Her attack values are very high, especially if she is a householder in Cloud Island. She can be a very good candidate. But again, crown, not too bad on her as well. So hopefully this helps you guys out figure out what you want to do with your Augustus Magic Balls, your A and Bs. Yeah. And if you have any other questions, definitely leave some comments down below. I love reading them and answering them. Hopefully it helped you guys out. I'll see you guys next time.